Small plants and ground cover vegetation are normally modelled as individual objects. However, if we were to scatter individual plants in a scene of this size, this lakeside scene, it would take over 6.5 million of them to fill the desired area. This is not the most efficient approach. The solution therefore is to use two forest pack objects, one to create a small patch of grass and a second to distribute the patch on the terrain. So first of all, to create a patch we use a circular spline. The size is rather dependent on the area but something like half a metre works well in many cases. Then you can click on the add multiple button and pick the various plants you want to create for your lawn or your ground cover. Make sure you delete the default segment that's left behind. In the display settings to see a little bit clearer what we're doing just change the mode to points cloud. And then come into the distribution rollout and in order to get the densest possible distribution change it to full. And then adjust the density units until we have a nice dense scattering of grass. Because we've used the full distribution map, a grid-like pattern can be visible sometimes in your scatters. So in order to break that up, turn on translation randomization and set it to a value a little bit larger like minus 20 to 20. Turn on rotation randomization and scale randomization too to disguise the repetition of plants. In order to create an unbroken area of lawn, these patches are going to overlap ever so slightly. Where they overlap at the moment, because the density is the same all the way to the edge of the spline, there'll be like a double density where they overlap. So in order to kind of alleviate that, what we'll do is use the fall off controls to thin out the density of the plants as they get close to the edge. So turn on density fall off, add a small include area and change the curve so that the density reduces slightly. And here you can see how that works. So we have three splines here that should all overlapping and where they've been thinned out towards the border, the density remains almost continuous across all the patches. So now that we've created our patches, the second part of this procedure is to scatter those inside a second forest pack object. And here we're going to illustrate how that's done along with some other features on the lakeside scene created by Poly Machine and used for our Forest Pack 6 launch. So first of all we'll apply the second Forest Pack object to the whole uh, terrain. Uh, but we'll turn off the surface because we only want it to be within this defined spline area. So we'll add that in as an include area and then we'll create some patches in this lawn by adding a second spline as an exclude area to create some gaps like so. We've also got the boardwalk itself so we can add that spline as an exclude area and increase the thickness to remove plants from under the boardwalk. Now we'll come in and using the altitude rain settings we can make sure the grass stops before it enters this bowl of the for, used to create the lake. Like so. And we can see that already or the original 6.5 million plants that would be needed to fill this area is down to 8,579. So let's actually start adding the patch to see how many we really need. So we'll add this patch in. As a nested forest pack object, there's no need to convert this to a poly or anything like that. You can just leave it as a nested forest pack object. And we can see at the moment that the density isn't quite right. So we'll go and change the distribution mode to full to make sure there are no gaps between these patches and then just adjust the density value until they just overlap ever so slightly as we saw in the previous example. Now you can see that quite clearly the grid-like structure uh, you caused by using the full density map so we need to break that up a little bit. So in order to do that we'll go back into the transform settings Turn on rotation randomization, scale randomization, which helps a little bit, but crucially turn on translation randomization, and that will break up the grid like structure um, of using the full map. You also want to make sure you haven't got any X and Y rotation turned on for patches, otherwise, the edges of the patch will pop up and become visible. You also want to make sure that the direction 
in the surface rollout is set to zero so that the patches rotate to follow the curvature of the s terrain. Otherwise, again, you will see the edges on hilly areas. And so that was the grass complete created with patches instead of individual objects. If you remember at the beginning, I said that 6.5 million individual plants would be required to fill this area. Um, but after creating the same area with patches, only 35,000 ish objects need to be scattered to fill the same area. So that's a huge reduction from 6.5 million to 35,000. And uh, it's a really a much more optimized way of working. The other trick to creating realistic ground cover is to make sure you've got multiple layers stacked on top of one another as opposed to trying to do everything in one forest pack object. And Poly Machine did this to create all the ground cover in this scene. There were several layers used. In no particular order, here are the layers that were used and uh, the way they interact. So we had long grass and then rocks and then dead leaves and then lily pads in the lake, reeds and then even more reeds as a separate layer, separate grass tufts, a lot of mushrooms, even more grass tufts, and then finally the trees, of course, in the background, which disguise the uh, edge of the grass where they finish. All of these layers were caused to interact in interesting ways by creating small patches and clearings between them uh, using just simple spline areas. And here you can see from a top view the basic setup of the splines, which looks complicated, but really it's just a series of hand-drawn splines which define clearings in the various grass layers. Um, so often these are shared between the layers as well. So what may be an exclude spline for one layer becomes an include spline for another layer. And in that way, you can create some really interesting effects. So here's how this final scene looks with the various ground cover layers all stacked on top of one another interacting by using multiple spline, include and exclude areas to create a really nice final effect.